Joining me now, three of the best political analysts in the whole country, all CNN contributors, Democratic strategist Hank Scheinkoff. Hank, good to have you here. Errol Lewis, columnist, New York Daily News, host of the morning show on WWRL in New York, and in our D.C. studio, syndicated columnist Diana West. Good to have you all here. Errol, let me start with you. Uh, <laughs> President Bush this week declared that he is a, he is a market-oriented guy, except in the face of a global market <laughs> meltdown. I uh, think he has it just about right. Oh, yeah. Inviolable principles, except when uh, circumstances has caused, uh, caused you to throw away those principles. Um, you know, it had to be tough for him, I think, to try and get on the world stage one last time and try and talk with authority uh, in, in the midst of an economic calamity that was arguably partly his doing. And with 24% approval ratings. I mean, other heads of state know how to read polls, you know, and right. they look at him and they say, this is not necessarily, this particular lame duck, not necessarily somebody we need to take too seriously right now. And, uh, and Diana, the idea that uh, he said the free market system uh, I isn't the problem, we shouldn't be reinventing it, yet it's his administration that spearheaded a drive to put $5 trillion of government money uh, into the system. Uh, he has, by so doing, changed the system, likely, forever. Yes. I mean, this would have been a terrific speech to hear maybe a couple of months ago um, in the face of bailout uh, clamoring. I don't know. It could be facing the world stage where, where the Europeans and so on who've been, who've been on the, you know, the social democracies, it may have been his last hurrah as the cowboy capitalist. I don't know. It was almost an elegy in some ways, but it, it, it sounded good, but it doesn't bear any relation to our reality. Well, reality, Hank Shankoff, uh, it was it was altered this this week when the Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson came out and said, "Oh yeah, we're, for six weeks we've been pursuing that tr troubled asset recovery program. You know the one where we buy toxic assets." And I told you you had to to the U.S. Congress, you got to give us seven hundred billion dollars right now, or the world will just collapse. He said, "Well, never mind. That wasn't really the idea. We'll try something different." Uh, has this has this Treasury Secretary, this administration, just lost all credibility now? There is no question that no one's paying attention to George Bush, and very soon no one will be paying attention to anything Paulson does because they don't have a real game plan. They don't know where this is going. They jumped too quickly on the front. They came up with a plan that isn't working, and nobody knows where it will end. You know, I, and, and I think about, uh, you know, well, Barack Obama talking about deliberate haste, and, I, and that sounded good. Uh, but when we look back over this administration, uh, the times in which they've said it's got to be uh, urgently uh, taken care of. We've got to move uh, right now. Immediacy is what this is about, whether it be the Iraq war, whether it be the, the bailout. Both instances, it turns out, uh, they either had uh, bad intelligence or, or were acting with no intelligence. This has to be a lesson for the Obama administration, do you not think? Oh, sure, sure. And don't forget the third stool of that. When The one time when urgent action was needed after the destruction of New Orleans, uh, you, they couldn't get out of their own way. Right. So, I mean, you know, getting the timing right, which is something, uh, at least in campaign mode, Obama has been pretty good at, is something that they're very, they're very uh, thoughtful uh, about. You know, for instance, he resigned his Senate seat. He's making clear he doesn't want to be part of whatever uh, rump movement or last-minute legislative foolishness goes on in How Congress. How many other senators do you think are thinking, Man, you know, I wish I could resign right now? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, just put it all off for another six weeks and then start over again, which is what he's choosing to do. Diana, your thoughts? Uh, this is a, an absolute mess, uh, obviously, this economic crisis. It's getting worse, not better. Uh, is there any appetite, do you suppose, in Washington, D.C. at all uh, to say, stop, enough? <laughs> The bailouts have to end. We have to draw a line here. Uh, this week we heard that the Republicans will not go along with a bailout of Detroit. Uh, your thoughts? Well, I wish, there, I wish that there were a sentiment to stop. Um, if we remember back to a week or so ago, we, we, have, we have massive majorities in the, in the House and Senate for the Democrats who are very gung-ho to continue the bailout. And, you know, of course, uh, President-elect Obama was also one who signed on to it. So I don't, I don't sense any, um, any clear-headed thinking except for maybe on this panel in terms of wanting to call a, a, a pause to this tremendous waste of billions. Right. Hank, uh, the appetite, uh, if you will, for, for prudence, responsibility, and an end to these bailouts uh, manifesting itself because Christopher Dodd said uh, that he couldn't find a Republican vote for the bailout of Detroit. Uh, do you think that uh, the result will be as uh, apparently the Democratic leadership in Congress now will wait through uh, till the Obama administration uh, is in place? Uh, do you think that there is a likelihood we won't see a bailout at all? 
either then or now? It's impossible to believe for a moment that the Obama administration, thinking politically or from a policy perspective, won't do something to aid Detroit. And that, because when you talk about Detroit, you're not talking about the city of Detroit, you're talking about a region and an economy in the region that's dependent upon the auto industry. Something has to give. I think they'll put it off, they'll come up with some kind of plan, but I don't think it's going to be at the, with the kind of richness that uh, some would like, frankly. All right, we're going to be back with our panel in just one moment. Stay with us. We're going to assess uh, the early days, if you will, of the Obama administration. And you know that change you can believe in? Well, just ask the Clintons how much change there's likely to be. We're back now with Hank Sheinkoff, Errol Lewis, and Diana West. Uh, Diana, the, the thought that change uh, we can believe in as the Obama campaign uh, hawked uh, itself, uh, it looks like that's going to involve a lot of Clinton appointees. Well, indeed. I mean, we saw that from the very first days, uh, bringing back Rahm Emanuel as chief of staff and John Podesta overseeing the transition. And now, of course, we have the big name of uh, Senator Clinton as the possible secretary of state, along with some other possibilities. I mean, it, it, it's, it's quite... Um, funny, I guess, in a way to look at it this way. We're not seeing change. We're seeing Clinton two or three. Hank, what do you think? Uh, I think we are going to see some change. I think that admit, there are professionals in government service and others who have spent their lives doing that are portions, significant portions thereof, who have knowledge that cannot be replicated. So getting them into government under uh, the Obama administration makes some sense. This is not Clinton again. That's a way to kind of create an argument that should not exist and does not exist. All right. Yeah, there's a, uh, I think we're going to see some new faces. I mean, believe me, there, there are going to be some folks out of Chicago and that operation that built up the Obama machine. That. Folks out of Chicago. I mean, you know, there. I I know some of them. I've heard of many others. I mean, somebody like Valerie Jarrett, who's a major power player on the national scene, who probably most people had never heard of before a few weeks ago, right. Right. and who's been guiding his career for years. There, there's a pretty deep bench there, I think. Um, I, I think, though, also, you know, we have to be clear that you know, this government, this plum book, which is 8,000 appointments, you know, the, the, the government is really run by uh, 600 or so really top officials and then several thousand others, including the, uh, the various commissions who are out there. So we have, we have a little time. I mean, the Clinton familiar names are going to always get a little bit extra attention, but well, there'll, be a lot of, there'll be a lot of new, new folks. You, you can argue they should, since it's the most uh, recent uh, Democratic administration. Uh, and these people have demonstrated experience uh, and, and capability. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but we're going to hear a lot in the press about this. We're going to, you know, the Clintons are taking over all of the nonsense. Uh, but let's talk about one thing that is nonsense, it seems to me. And that is uh, that seven-page uh, personnel <laughs> questionnaire. Uh, do you want to be in the administration, Errol? I mean, that's something. Uh, <sighs> did you ever own a gun? Did you ever hurt anybody? Uh, I, What's the substance of all the speeches you've given over the last 10 yeah. years? I mean, that's Your insane. emails? It's uh, insane. The, the whole thing. Absolutely. I, I wonder, in fact, if Barack Obama could survive that. I mean, because it, it's supposed to include any emails or any relationships that might be embarrassing to Barack Obama. And drug use? I start uh, thinking of Resco. I start thinking of heirs. I mean, you know, uh, what, what people from uh, Trinity United uh, Church... Are they supposed to write that down? I mean, that's yeah. potentially embarrassing. And drug use, uh, you know, Senator Obama's acknowledged that he's used drugs. Sure. Uh, sure. And uh, cocaine, uh, marijuana. P pretty high standard. <laughs> and uh, I, too much information available for too many eyes to pry. And anybody who's serious won't fill out that questionnaire mm -hmm. unless they got other plans in life. And the great thing is, Diana West, that the, <laughs> that the questionnaire you have to fill out to, to get a part of that $700 billion federal bailout that's two pages. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should swap. You got it. Thank you very much, Diana West. Errol Lewis, thank you very much. Hank Shankoff, thank you. And thank you for being with us. Join us here tomorrow, and please join me on the radio Monday through Friday for the Lou Dimes Show. Go to LouDimesRadio.com to get the local listings in your area. For all of us, thanks for watching. Good night from New York.